الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله a question was asked <coughs> by a brother and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al He says, I feel it would be beneficial if you spoke about an epidemic occurring amongst some Salafis where they talk about minhaj as Salaf but don't act upon it. They talk about following the sunnah but don't apply it in their daily lives. They talk about seeking knowledge but never seek it. And something even more dangerous is that because they see that Tawheed is the most important part of our deen, rightfully so, they mistakenly think that it is the only important thing and take sins as well as acts of worship lightly. And of course I include myself in that Wallahu Musta'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi and rizqan tayyib wa amal al So, the brother raised many issues that in fact I think we've talked about pretty extensively in many over the course of some years about the importance of practicing the sunnah. Practice. Practicing what you preach. And I've said this countless times, and by now, some of you who don't even know Arabic probably have memorized this principle, hopefully. Al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat. That the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. Let's look at an example. This pen, this is a blue pen. If I say, no, it's pink. Al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat. I said, no, this is a pink elephant, in fact. I like to call this pink elephant. It's a pink elephant. The reality of this substance is that, no, everyone accepts pretty much that this is a pen and that it's a blue pen, unless they're colorblind or some other uh, things that influence their judgment about this pen. Likewise, even that example we could apply to the Dawa. The reality is of what a person is practicing, what they understand about Islam and Tawheed, Aqeedah, uh, you know, Menhaj, their methodology. That is what is going to define the reality of that person. Likewise, do not underestimate, as some of the people do, things like manners. Things like uh, you know, the way we interact with people and fiqh, all of these things make up Islam. So as long as it makes up Islam, it has effect on your tamasik bi sunnah, your adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But let's talk about more specifically. So uh, anyhow, there are shortcomings in any of those areas because Salafiyya, we're not claiming that we are a new group, a new sect. And Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan has some very nice speech about this. And prior to him, I mean, he's just from our contemporary scholars. How many of our scholars, Imam Muqbil, uh, Al Albani, Bin Baz, Bin Uthaymeen from the Giants, Sheikh Rabir, many Kathir, Kathir, okay? Many of our ulama, and I just mentioned a handful, a handful of some of the the major scholars of this particular era, probably of the past 15 to 20 years, and there's plenty from major scholars that I didn't mention from those time periods. So don't think that it's restricted to just those few giants, but they are just known for really pushing the Dawah of Ahlul Sunnah and reviving it. Salafiyah, and I know you probably can't see this, but uh, getting back to uh, the topic at hand, I'm just going to be give you a concise understanding of some categories that some of the scholars mention with regards to the Dawah. 
However, on, and, and kind of what's going on with some of the fitna, because as you mentioned in your question, which highlights the problem, there are many people who claim Salafiyya, but they don't want to practice, or they're weak, weak, weak in practice. No one respects the person who knows the categories of Tawheed, and they know uh, s some Kuwait in the Minhaj and methodology, but yet they're a chronic abuser of women, or a chronic uh, uh, zani committing adultery, a, a chronic user, uh, you know, using drugs and alcohol. No one respects that. No one respects that. And, and that shows a weakness in Iman, and of course, all of this relates to your Iman. Salafia is Islam. That's what we're saying. Our claim is that Salafia is Islam. It is the Dawa to the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and to follow the understanding of the Sahaba, in light of the understanding of the Sahaba, and what the Salaf, what the Ijma, what they had, what they were united upon, and not in just particular uh, statements of any one of them, but rather those things they were united upon. So, that is our Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, Dawah to Salafiyyah. So here, I just put it into three categories of what we see what's happening with some of the fitna that's going on. Here on the right I said ghulu, meaning extremism. Wasat, meaning in the middle, so a lot of people say balanced. And that's where we should try to be. We should try to be balanced because the balance is, the balance is really what it is, what Salafiyah is. It's, it is balance. We should never say Salafiyah is extreme or Salafiyah is throwing away Islamic principles. Never! Never accept that from anyone, whoever says it. But rather, Salafiyya is this in the middle. These other are on the side. Like Sheikh Salim and Fuzan, he explains that ghulu. Ghulu means tajawuz al-had. It means that there's a boundary. So here's our boundary here, Salafiyya. But this, these people who have ghulu, they have went away from the boundary. Here's the boundary, because you probably can't see it. The boundary, let's say that's the road, the road of Salafiyyah. Uh, the book, the, the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, Qal to Kitabillah, as Muk, Imam Muqbil said, uh, Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, Dawah to uh, uh, Min Kitabillah ila Kitabillah. Wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Muqbil did not call to himself, and he was one of the most amazing. And if you listen to his lectures and so forth, I, I just can't have, put it in words how much that man influenced my life from the limited interaction I had with him and at the same time seeing him and, and seeing the, to what we believe to be sincere and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of the hearts but you saw in his actions, you saw that he was an imam, you know, and uh, something, and I've seen a lot of scholars but I would just say that truly that Imam was amazing and was really, I believe, very sincere and humble and really all he cared about was Islam and the Sunnah till his death. Rahimahullah. And may Allah have mercy upon all the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah. So, this is Salafi, is the balanced path. Ghulu and extremism is going beyond that bound. And to the extent that you have ghulu and extremism can make you leave Salafiyyah into some sort of hizbiya. His bia. So the, the extent, sorry about my writing, my English and my Arabic is terrible. The extent that you go into, uh, that you go to the extreme can be hizbiya. And it could go to hizbiya kufriya. It could even go to disbelief if you're going too extreme. And we don't have time for really extensive examples, but we're just going to keep this general. But the other side, as some of the scholars mention, they talk about mumayya. So we need to understand a little bit about this term. Mumayya. This is in reference, and I had a very nice definition. I can't find it right offhand in my, uh, from uh, Sheikh Rabi about this uh, term. Just a nice, so that way you have a working definition with these terms. Mumayya is referring to the ones who waste and compromise principles of the deen. 
So when, when someone says they throw a claim at you that you're Mumeya, like I had some guys and then they'll put on the, on the YouTube in their comments, and you're Mumeya, or they'll just say, they'll, the, matter of fact, most of them you can see they have no knowledge. So they'll just throw a claim out, Mumeya, Tekfiri, blah, Kafir, but they, it's so easy for them. And then, and then I always ask them for evidence so that we can make a lesson out of it. Sincerely, I want to make a lesson. Let's see what his claim, if his claim holds up, number one, and let's see what we can benefit from that claim. And let's see, thirdly, if we can correct ourselves, if it's true. But most of the time, it's a waste. They're Mumeya and they're throwing out, you know, just throwing out words. So anyway, Mumeya means to waste and compromise those principles. It is in reference to people who are compromising the the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some of the Kuwait of Ahl Bidah. Sometimes you hear some of the brothers refer to other brothers as Mumayya. They'll say, hey, I saw him sitting with a Mubtadi. So that means he's throwing away Hajar. He's throwing away leaving the Salams on that person. He's throwing away this. He's throwing away that. But again, it's not simple as just making a claim. You have to have evidence for that. Your evidence is not just what you see because you might not be looking at the Musalim or Mufasid. Because all of those issues uh, had your, you know, uh, leaving brothers, leaving the salams from your brothers, acting shadid with your brothers, you know, being harsh with your brothers, all of these things, they all have principles. And those principles are the principles of the deen. And they're the principles of fiqh. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, gives them understanding of the religion. That fiqh, fiddin, a lot of those quiet, and I remember talking to Sheikh Suleiman Rahali about this, and I asked Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali about this, I asked Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi about this, all recorded, Sheikh, my Sheikh Sheikh Saeed bin Halal about it, I asked Sheikh Abdullah Obeylan, uh, many uh, scholars about this. And I, I asked him about, you know, giving dawah and, uh, you know, and, uh, with Ahl bidah you know, or, or, or going to the Masajid of Ahl bidah and things like this. They all said in one form or another, It depends on the harms and the benefits. So it's not a simple black and white. And we're going to talk about those traits really quick in, in just a minute. So it's not a black and white issue. So some people say, ah, we saw them sitting in this meshin. I saw them give salams to this one. Why were you in the car with this one? And they make a hukum, alatul. You know, they just make a hukum. The problem is they're a lot of times not students of knowledge. And if they're students of knowledge, maybe they're beginning students of knowledge. And if they have more knowledge than that, we don't know what their cust is. Either they have a nux in this knowledge of this bab, or they don't have any husn al They don't have a, um, any good... Uh, outlook for their brothers or a positive outlook for their brothers and putting the best spin on it whatever there's a lot of reasons for these things but uh, let's go back because again this is basically I'm trying to summarize books not a book books volumes we could just take those vol volumes of Fatawa and this is what I'm trying to put in would have been a five minute video I'm sure it'll be 20 well I'm a so again those are th those things go back if you need to Mumeya, let's just start with Mumeya since we're in this category. Mumeya, some of the things that I just highlighted this, I didn't go to particular principles that some of the, because some of these things you're going to la shuck have differences of opinion on. Because this is a general term. But when you talk about specifics, like I was just looking at Sheikh, uh, Ramz, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Ramzan al Hajri, he's here in the province I'm living in. Uh, he did an introduction about uh, a book about Hadadiya and Mumeya. Okay, for some other student, I believe. Uh, and they mentioned some specific things, some specific principles. Basically, they took some principles that Ahmed Bazmul and others had mentioned about uh, Sheikh, um, uh, Sheikh Halabi, uh, Sheikh, um, Sheikh Halabi, anyway, uh, from Jordan, you know, one of uh, Imam al Albani's students. So, they took some specific statements of his, and then they said, oh, he made a principle, and from this, there's a lot of there's another there, that, you, that, there's, that you really have to study those principles. And even one of the people put it on my YouTube, ah, oh, you said this, <laughs> that's Halabi's principle. Okay, let's drop that, let's get back on task. Mumeya, it's wasting the principles. Some of the key things, Mumeya, it means when someone is doing that, they compromises the usul of Ahl-Sunnah, okay? One of the examples might be silence on bid'ah. 
that you know people who really fit that category of mumia in a in a general sense is they will never speak about some of the bid'ah. I don't say that you need to busy yourself with recitations. Even as a student of knowledge, not everyone should be involved in that. Not everyone has the knowledge to do that. Imam uh, Fozan mentioned it. Imam Wasiyallah Abbas mentioned it. Kathir, Kathir, Sheikh Anas, Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Saeed. How many we could bring books of of scholars? Sheikh Obaid even mentioned it. Who actually is very uh, uh, active in refutations, and he even mentioned, "Hey, the beginning student, now you shouldn't be in that. A new Muslim shouldn't be involved in that. Learn the deen, learn that first. Then you can learn who not to study with and who, you know, these kind of things." Okay. Anyway, silence on bid'ah, meaning, and I'm talking about mumayya, meaning that they never speak about uh, a mubtadiyah, and they see it; it's right in front of their face. It's a difference between, between seeing some maslaha sometimes, but to just drop that principle of Ahl Sunnah, no. There is no time for that. Okay? And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. A second point, never defends against bid'ah. Okay? So they don't even defend the sunnah. For example, a, a specific example I would think would be somebody like Yasser Qadi. Okay? In his prior time, he was he had a very different stance. He even mentions this. He transformed and so forth and whatever and he evolved into we don't know what. But La Shuk, he fits this definition. You know, if you want to know this the meaning of this definition, just look at Yasser Qadi. Mumeya, Khalas. I mean hardcore to where he left the Sunnah La Shuk. He doesn't even care about uh Dao to Ahl Sunnah, Dao to Salafia. That doesn't even mean, you know, he might keep some of the aqidah, but khalas, he just, you know, even even there's some shubha in some of the statements he says, and Allah, may Allah guide us in him. Okay, that is that. The third point about Mumayyah, interested only in compromising for more audience, for a greater audience, okay? So also Mumayyah, people who tend to be on this minat, they will compromise the principles just so they can have more numbers. Similar to the minhaj methodology of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Ikhwan al-Muslimin is very mumayya. They will compromise the principles of Aqidah, and they have a, 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 an invented principle that we will leave the differences that we have amongst us and cooperate on those things which are similar. And that is al itlaq you know, they will, so then you have a Khwan Muslim, he's with Shi'i, he's with a Tikfiri, he's with Diobandi, he's with Naqshbandi, he's with all these groups, and he may even have a general Sunni Aqidah, but he's willing to compromise all of that for the greater, what he believes is the greater good, having more numbers, okay? Even if they're on every kind of methodology, and some have disbelief in their beliefs, and some from Iman, and some from here, and some from there. Right. The fourth principle with Mumay, I want to mention, does not refer affairs back to the scholars most of the time. So Mumay, sometimes we see some of these groups in America, they're not even Salafi anyway, they're, they're off the scale of Salafia. I'm not talking about Mumay within Salafia, I'm talking about Mumay outside of Salafia. Some of these guys, and I've mentioned some of them in my lectures, who don't even care and don't adhere to Salafi at all, but they, they regard themselves as scholars and they regard just people that they know in America who they believe have reached a, a great level of scholarship. They believe Hamza Yusuf, Yasser Qadi, all these people are on a level of scholarship to where they should be making fatawa, all these kinds of things. So this is the thing we say that they most of the time don't, they will answer anything and they don't refer back to scholars. Meaning they don't, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, فَسَلَهْ لِذِكْرِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So if you don't know, ask the people of knowledge. But it's not about entertainment, dawah, and so forth. Also, Mumeya, you see that a lot of their orientation is geared to entertainment dawah. That they're about entertaining. Let's keep the audience active, keep the audience good by making them laugh. And sometimes that laughter can be very dangerous because then it could have a resemblance with din by making fun of the religion. So you have to be careful. That's why it's best to kind of restrain that those aspects and, and so much entertainment in your dawah. I believe I'm from more the old school of what I learned from the, my scholars, and especially Imam well, on down the line, that, you know, more of a traditional way. You know, it doesn't mean you don't enjoy. I see Mashaikh that laugh and enjoy and make a joke and we have good time. But 
their good time is restrained. It's not going way beyond the bounds. Uh, videos called uh, how the how uh, uh, Panda Two was taken from the Quran. This is a recent one. Man Ali Khan. I saw that he did uh, just a little clip. I didn't even open it, but it's just these titles, and we we've seen him laughing in huge crowds, laughing about nonsense most of the time. Mumayyan, right? Wasit, middle balance. I think that's clear. Practices and understands the usul of Ahlul Sunnah. They practice it, and they look at the maslaha and the masari, the mufasid, and the the harms and the benefits when they do issues when they practice. You don't see them rushing to make hajir of someone, you know, to to cut someone off, rushing to leave the salams for someone. They they don't do that. Rather, they're balanced because they're trying to make tatbik of those kawai. And they're looking at this, every situation is different. Maybe this one is a hardcore tekfiri where it's absolutely necessary. There's more maslaha, more benefit in leaving him and giving, not giving salams. Me, myself, I've almost never left giving salams to someone as a Muslim. I just haven't done it except one particular tekfiri from my city. Actually, two or three of them. There was a group of them. And they attacked me and we would go back and forth and do all this stuff. And I saw no benefit and I actually would ask the other imams and stuff why are you allowing these guys in the masjid until one of them alhamdulillah was finally deported to Somalia or somewhere in Kenya because they're, they were spreading fitin and evil and spreading uh, uh, folda amongst the youth and the people and uh, about issues of takfir and about the imams of the deen or the imams of Ahl Sunnah right. so the second point with uh, uh, being in the middle being uh, practicing the Salafiyah like it should be being, means that they look at the harms and the benefits, especially in issues of tabdir, of declaring someone an innovator. They don't rush. They look at an innovator. They make a distinguishment because they're operating on principles. Well, they're looking at the the Salaf, how the Salaf practice these issues. So did the Salaf rush every time someone made a mistake and make tabdir of them, say they're not from the Deen, saying they're Mumayya, saying they're this, or did the Salaf look at the harms? and the benefit and make a difference between someone who is his usul is Ahl Sunnah but he made a mistake in a masala or some mistakes in Masail in different issues but they still maintain his respect respect for him and they refuted his mistakes that's one of the ways that the Salaf used to deal with uh, people who made mistakes even if they fell into bid'ah. the other way is if their usul, their foundation that they stood upon, their aslan, their hardcore ashiri, their hardcore ma'tazidi, their hardcore jahmi, their hardcore whatever, okay? Khariji from uh, Ahl Tikfir. Then those ones, uh, you don't, do not maintain their, uh, their status as, you know, in a, a respectful light necessarily, and you refute them, and uh, you, you refute their mistake. Okay, and they 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 don't get any real respect. But with that, that doesn't mean we go beyond the bounds to ghulu again to the extremism. So even if you don't respect, say if I speak about Nurman Ali Khan, for example, or Yasser Qadi or whoever Hamza Yusuf, whatever, the other guy in Cambridge, the Sufi um, academic, I can't think of his name. Anyhow. If we say what well, you're going to do a refutation, it must be knowledge based. Number one. Number two, it can't be based. You can't lie. Even one lie on them, you've aided them, and maybe they're going to take from you your mukayama. You can't lie on them. You can't misinterpret what they say. So you need to know what they said in the context of what they said. You know, if it if it deserves context. Some things are very clear. Some things are very clear. Okay. If someone says tohid is not important. Let's just, this is an example. If someone says that, you don't need to look at necessarily what he said before and after because it's very clear he just destroyed the usul of the religion. Okay? Right. And uh, all those issues, and they look at the harms and the benefits and how to, they, make, they look at the conditions for those things. They look at the conditions of tikfir, the conditions of tibdir, the muana, those things which prevent you from making tikfir and tibdir. The, uh, 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 the Mu'ana, the, the, the conditions, and maybe the, the Wabit, which are also similar. And then the criterion. They look at those things. They have principles. They have something they follow. Which differs with some of the other groups. Okay, the third thing is 
uh, that someone who's really on Salafia, they're trying, they should be striving to reform themselves. Because that's really what it means to, to be practicing the deen. The Salaf, how many athar of the Salaf, how many books? Let's see, there's a book here. Hilya to Oliya. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, something like six, seven volumes. All about reform in the self. Uh, countless books like this. Mosua uh, Imam Ibn Abi Dunya. Also, back here somewhere. How many volumes is it? You know. So don't say that that's not from the Salaf, not from following the Salaf to be look at the importance of manners. And we've already talked about this countless times. Prophet said, There isn't a thing which weighs heavy on the scale on the Day of Judgment than righteous manners. The Prophet said it. Are you trying to say that emphasizing that is mumayya? Emphasizing the Sunnah is mumayya? وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ضَلَالِ so reform in the self, Imam al Bani in the contemporary times really emphasized the da'wah and this picked up in what we see in the da'wah in today of really a tarbiyah wa tesfia is looking at the education, educating people about the sunnah talib al-ilm, talib al-ilm farid tu ala kulli muslim wa muslima seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every muslim wa muslima you know, he revived this, that seeking knowledge is very important and tesfia reforming yourself and this in turn reforms the society and this is what all of our ulama of Salafiyya in this contemporary time really made a push for that's why all of those places whether it be the, the various Marrakis in Yemen from Damaj to Dar al-Hadith and Shihr to Dar al-Hadith and Hudayda to Dar al-Hadith all over in Aden and, and Fiyush and, and all these different places all this was under that same Salafi banner uh, and, and emphasizing education and reforming yourself. Don't come out of these maracas and be the most extreme individual. Just everything you do is destroying. No, that's not. that wasn't the maqsid of those, those places. On top of that, with those students that came out of that really benefited the people, I mean, you should see something from that. You should see, as 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 the self used to say, al 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 uh, al amal thamarat al ilm, that deeds are the fruits of knowledge. Deeds are the fruits of knowledge. Good deeds are the fruits of knowledge. And may Allah forgive us of our many many sins. Amin ya rabbal alamin, and help us to perfect our deeds. Allahumma inni as'alaka al-ilm al-nafiyah riskin tayyibu a'mal al-muttaqabilin. May Allah bless us all with al-nafiyah, beneficial knowledge. Wa al nafiyah wa a'mal al-sari. May Allah bless us with righteous deeds. And 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 risk and tayyibah and 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 riz so we can support the dawah and support our families and support going forward and khair and support the Rohingya Muslims and support everyone who's suffering in the world with Allah Mustaan. Tayyib. Ah. Hulu extremism. Right. Number one, the first thing, excessive tabdi and takfir, meaning they're very extreme in making tabdi, meaning everyone. They make new principles. So if you go to extreme, sometimes some people just do it a lot. A lot of tabdi. You know, without either the right to do so, without the knowledge to do so, without the prerequisites to do so, whatever the case may be. So they may be in the in the, in the board, they may still be in Salafia. They may, meaning that they're still Salafi, perhaps, some of them, and, you know, they're within that bounds, but they fall into this error, this mistake, okay? Then there are some that are outside of Salafiyah. They are so extreme that they're outside of Salafiyah. You know, people call them Hizbis, rightfully so. You know, maybe that they, they have become a new group, and they make a whole set of new principles. If you're not with us, you're against us, uh, the George Bush pr principle. If you are, uh, 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 you know, the thing, this is a qa'idah, Sheikh Salih, uh, Sheikh, uh, Salih Suhaimi mentions about this, you know, and we find this, uh, many of our brothers fell into this. I know brothers personally, we were in Damaj together, who don't even give me salams anymore for these things because this is how they practice. I'll give you their, the way they think. This particular, particular brother, I've known him for 20 years, we were friends, good friends. I'd visit him when he used to live here in Saudi and this and that and the other. He cut me off in a drop of a hat. We had one discussion about Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, Rahili. He said, and he said, Ahi, that's whack what you said, blah, blah, blah. And actually, he, he made some serious mistakes 
in his understanding of the religion when he tried to refute me and so-called advise me. I said, no, Ahi, I said, the asal of dawah, the, the, the foundation of dawah is that you should be gentle with people. Most people don't accept from you unless you're kind with them. Even Ahl al-Bidah. He said, Ahi, that's Mumayya, this is this, Ahi, and he started using crazy language, you know. I'm like, Ahi, I said, SubhanAllah. Soon after that, a couple more messages, bam, haven't heard from him in over a year and a half now. So, it's that extreme, extremism. So he's operating under the principle, whoever doesn't make tabdi of a mubtadiyah, then he's a mubtadiyah. Whoever doesn't make, call an innovator an innovator, then he's an innovator. That's his principle. And that's a principle some people have been spreading for years. False, falsely so, as the ulama have made clear. And we, we don't find this precedence in the Salaf like this. On top of that, this is someone the scholars disagree about. We're not saying that all the scholars have to be unanimous. Don't take that from my understanding, that there has to be a jama'a. La. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that there's major difference about a particular sheikh or a particular individual between Ahl Sunnah. And then you force the people, that's another third principle, they force the people to take their view. And if you don't take their view, you are Muqtadi'at too. You have helped the Muqtadi'in. You attack Ahl Sunnah. These are all the kind of statements you'll see. And it's been going on for quite some time. This kind of extremism. Now when it comes to particular individuals and particular organizations, that requires looking at that, uh, a knowledge-based perspective from the ulama or from the big students of knowledge to look at individuals and to look at those uh, organizations to see that have been practicing these principles are they Salafi or not? Are they Hizbi or not? Because these are traits of Hizbiya meaning someone can have a trait of Hizbiya and not be a Hizbi. Someone can do an issue of Kufr and not be a Kafir. I mean take them out of the fold of Islam, Shirk Akbar and not be a Kafir because that's the difference between as we explained in Noah of Islam Takfir mutlaq wa takfir mu'ayyin. Making takfir on an individual versus making the takfir of was of a general characteristic. Likewise with a mubtadi'ah, the same. Someone can fall into bid'ah. I can fall into bid'ah. I've probably fallen into bid'ah, of course, in my Islam, since I've been a Muslim. Of course, many times, I'm sure. That doesn't mean a mubtadi'ah. Doesn't mean I stayed upon that. Once I learned that that was a mistake, alhamdulillah. Where you, is a person open? So is it based on desires? Is it being, you know, there's many factors there. And so that's the point is, is people who are extreme, they don't look to any of that. For them, khalas, you're either with us or against us. If you don't speak good about these particular brothers or this sheikh, the khalas, you're muqtadiyah. Whoever, they make statements like whoever speaks about so-and-so, khalas, they're hit. As if our imams today and our shiuch today are like those, uh, in, those ruat, on that level, no, we love our mashaykh, but they're fadila, they're fadl, and their level is not like the self. It's not like the self. So we have to be, you, the youth need to know this because a lot of times they don't know. And they, they will make all kinds of statements, and I've heard it countless times, a lot of time. So, excessive to deer, and using those principles, whoever doesn't. So, going back to the situation, the brother made to deer of me, basically, I'm sure. He cut me off, made a hedger of me, because I didn't take his view. Even though my view, I supported with evidence of why I didn't. I, I said, hey, I don't see Tibdi of Sheikh Ibrahim al I don't defend him in any mistakes he made, but he defended himself pretty well. He, he, the arguments and accusations against him, made by Sheikh Urbaid, made by Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, made by uh, others, you know, the Sheikh held his weight. He, he, he held himself pretty well, and he did it with ilm and, and with the salaf from kitab was sunnah and the understanding of the salaf. So I got to go with that. I got to go with the adilla. I go with the strongest evidence, not with my love for Sheikh Urbaid, not with my love for Sheikh Ibrahim. I didn't take a choice and say, man, I like Sheikh Ibrahim a little bit more, or I like Sheikh Urbaid a little more. Sheikh Urbaid is senior in, 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 in age. I didn't look at that. But I looked at their hujjah. I looked at their dalil. I saw, I have, I have probably behind this camera, I have at least... I'm sure I've got every book that I have about that issue. Every statement I could find, I've got at least probably six books about this issue. And I made a judgment based on what I felt was the most correct. And my judgment 
I go with in accordance with those Mashaik like Sheikh Falah Ismail, Sheikh uh, Suleiman Rahali, Sheikh Saleh Suhaini, Kathir min ulama'ina. Don't agree with that. The Mufti of Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, so many Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh, many Mashaik had entered into this affair that the people don't even know about. Well, understand. So are all of them Mumayyah? Why don't you make Tabdir and, 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 and of those great Imams? They have much more knowledge and they're much more responsible than I am. But instead, no, the people don't see those kind of things. So they quick, they're quick, and that extremism overtakes them and overtakes their hearts. Well, I'm saying, like, the third thing is sometimes you find from individuals who are extreme is the sinfulness. They become very sinful. They're into the worst of sins. They're known for zina and they're known for this, but they're quick and strong about making takfir or something to be of someone. That extremism, extremism, most extremists, they break. And let me give you the real story of someone who I knew personally, and a lot of us who were in Yemen knew him. And who, he was popular in the UK and different circles. The guy, Morton Storm, okay, he is, he's on CNN, he's been on all kinds, he has a book, I have his book here. <clears throat> and he mentioned some of us in that book. The point is, he was in Damascus. Sheikh Mukbil used to like this guy a lot. This guy later, years later, because of... He went to the extremism after he left the magic, got around those tekfiris, and major, he was the kind of guy who would get close, you know, he would come up to Sheikh Mukbil and ask him himself, Sheikh, we had this bird, and they had to kill this bird. He asked the Sheikh, the Sheikh walked by us, and he just said, no, nah, basically, that's the bird that fits under the hadith, you gotta go. The point being, this guy got around all these extremists, like heavyweight Al-Qaeda people, okay, and he got in there, he got close to Olaki, he got close to many people much bigger than Olaki from the Yemeni Tekfiris and, and around the world, okay, a network. And he speaks, he details it in his book, and I believe it because I know the, I know the nature of this guy. Point being, his extremism led him to Zandaka. He got so extreme to where all he thought of Islam was it was those extreme ideas because he put his whole heart into that extremism. He thought that it was right to kill. He thought it was right to make Tekfir. He thought it was right to do this. And... In the end, he broke his ham sandwich, worked for all these intelligent agencies, CIA, uh, M15, whoever they are in the UK, or MI6, or MI5, whatever, and all these organizations, he became an agent for them. And left. he left Islam and became an agent. So this is the end result. Extremism, a lot of times, that's how you have that sinfulness. You either have sinfulness, and as Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says, that al maasi barid al kufr that sinfulness is like a it's a means to disbelief it's a means to disbelief but the last point i want to mention is that you see the people who are extreme their world view is black and white so people will make tabdir when you see that are in these groups and i hate this that this is for their youth the youth sometimes you want to tell the youth marriages break up because of this i've seen it i've seen young couples break up hearts are broken because one is extreme they ask questions like the imam was declared a mubtada by our group uh he married us is our marriage valid this is the kind of questions that people ask uh you know can i pray in this masjid they're innovators who says you can't pray behind a muslim as long as they don't have bid'ah mukaffara that's it that's the qaeda as long as they don't have bid'ah mukaffara now, it's better if you pray in a Salafi masjid if that's closer, but if that's what's convenient, that's all you can do and make Fajr, you pray behind Jamaat Tabliq, you pray behind Qawad al pray behind the Sufis as long as they do not have bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Okay? But the extremists, you see that extremists with these youth, they don't have tools to understand. So for them, the world is black and white. These guys said this, that's the haq. They take a statement that's been translated of them of one shaykh. Sheikh so-and-so said this, that's the haq. La yuraf al haq birja walakin yuraf al rija yuraf yuraf al haq. What? Anyhow, you don't know the truth by men, but rather you know the men by the truth. So meaning that we use the haq to measure the people. We use the truth to measure the people, not the people to define the truth. We don't say, I don't say, Sheikh Ibrahim, everything he does, that's the haq. Imam al-Albani said this, that is the haq, khalas, that's it. No, these issues have, it, it, who is in line with the delil? Sometimes they're opposers, sometimes someone from Ahl Bidah 
might have the haq in an issue, in a debate, versus that Sunni Imam. So the haq is not restricted to an individual or individuals, but it's restricted. It, it, it is restricted only to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in light of that. And the Sabila Salaf, what what is in most in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how we define the haq. We don't define the haq by individuals. So that's why it's very important not seeing the world in just black and white terms. Look at Daesh. Look at uh, those people like uh, Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra and uh, Al Qaeda, uh, Daesh or ISIS. Those guys see everything black and white. You never see even in their writings. Uh, them looking and talking about the Wabit, usually they just see Haras. Like this, you're a disbeliever. This, you know, it's just like the original Quadrage. You're either a Mu'min, and a Mu'min means that you're with us. That's it. That's all what a, a Mu'min means that you're a part of their group. You're a part of their group, and you take Bayat to their Imam. A disbeliever is everyone else. Everyone else. Either if they didn't make Hijra, <coughs> then they should be doing evil attacks <coughs> around the world <coughs> and this is what they call to so the world is black and white they don't see any you know halas it's it's this and that and likewise our youth are infected with this and they fall into hezbiah because of this they fall into asib to blind following and attaching themselves and being prejudiced towards certain personalities brother so-and-so said it usted so-and-so said it da 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 that's it they blind follow them. SubhanAllah. And I'm going to give you another true story. I just saw that someone sent it to me on the YouTube. I was shocked. This is a brother who's known as uh, a part of a Salafi organization. And he was speaking about a topic he should not be speaking about. This is the mushkira. If we don't know our level, then we end up speaking about issues we shouldn't speak about. This individual was speaking about slavery. Okay? And what amazed me is all the comments that supported what he was saying. It's like they didn't know anything about history. They threw away all of history, Islamic history, every kind of history, all world history. And what the brother was saying was mistaken. What would be better is the brother talk about those subjects he studied. And not get involved in those things you haven't studied because that's where you go astray. His were blatant errors. And what he was saying is that Islam, there was no slavery in Islam, basically. Or there is no slavery of Africans by Muslims. How could you say this? Saudi Arabia just banished slavery in the 60s. 1962, I think it was. 62. So, no. We have, there's the, the evidence from everywhere, all the sources. We could bring books, libraries to refute that statement. The point is, don't speak about issues you don't have knowledge about. That's the thing. As they say, stay in your lane. Restrict yourself. I try to restrict myself to those things I've studied. Not, I'm not going to talk about, uh, uh, give you about uh, Fara'id. I've studied Fara'id, but I'm horrible at Fara'id. I'm not going to speak to you. Bure. I'm weak in Bure. I can't speak to you and, and give you, you know, uh, <laughs> give you much and that's going to be beneficial about those issues. So people make ta'asab, so they, they, they will prejudice and be prejudiced and follow someone even in their mistakes. Even if you present otherwise. No, I think he's on the haq though. He's on the haq in general. He's on the haq. That's it. He doesn't make, you know, I, I, I'm going to stick with him. Put my religion with him. Wallah al-Mustaad. Taqlid, also the same. Taqlid of scholars or taqlid of themselves. So this ta'asab, and this leads to traits of hizbiya where you make, you, people have to blindly follow you. Even if you made mistakes, how many mistakes do we have from sometimes our Salafi brothers that they forced the people, marriages were broken, communities were split up, and then later it comes to found out, find out they were wrong. And then they erase all the information about those mistakes that they were actively spreading. Actively spreading. But all the harm and the fallout from that was never acknowledged and never repaired. So this is the importance of why extremism is so destructive. The Prophet ﷺ said about Ghulu, he said that, uh, you know, he, he mentioned about Ghulu being destructive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that this is something that destroys. And so it's not simply just saying Salafiyyah that it's a name without practice, you know, and it depends on the individual which where they fall. Are they Mumayyah? Are they, you know, are they uh, uh, 
falling into extremism or are they falling into wasting and compromising the principle? That depends on each individual. I know I went way beyond the question, but I wanted to make this a valuable tool and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with ikhlas, with avad, and accepts it as a good deed and not as a bad deed. May Allah protect us from hezbiya and, and partisanship and being a part of a cult because some of the youth, they, they can't see and they actually blind follow people and ideologies and personalities just like the disbelievers follow some magicians and some and some saints and some uh, other people and some cult leaders that if they say jump off the bridge you'll jump off the bridge that you will follow the way of those people who came before you and we ask Allah the Almighty accept our good and forgive our evil